Okay guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to become the top 1% when it comes to getting that developer job. So I have noticed that a lot of people that are coming in my coaching program, uh, people that have been self-studying, they are making a lot of mistakes and I want to show you what that mistake is once so I can have a video for them to show them because I'm going to show them exactly this video and then for you as well to know what to do to actually learn JavaScript in the right way. And then if you learn JavaScript in the right way, you can learn React. And then if you learn React, then you can get a developer job that's gonna pay you six figures and you'll be able to work remotely. So this trick here, it's gonna be probably the most important eye-opening kind of video that you've ever seen. And I can guarantee you that. And I came to this conclusion with the thing that I'm gonna show you after many years of coaching because you know how it is when you are so good at something or not so good i don't want to puff my own chest but when you are doing something automatically and when you've been in the industry for a lot of time you are taking a lot of your frameworks and um, mental models for granted things that i have developed from practice things things that i've developed from seeing other developers do their work I took those models for granted and, and I managed to break it down in a simple way that you can actually take in, interpret and use it straight away, okay? So you have two applications. This is the bad one and this is the good one, okay? As you can see, with the bad application, we have one, two, three, four lines of code. Essentially, we can have just one line of code. And all we do is we just click on this button and we increase the number. The good one is doing the same thing as the other one in a slightly different way. I would ask you right now, can you see the difference between the bad one and the good one? This one has more lines of code, so it's technically worse, right? Because I know a bunch of beginners heard this idea, don't write too much code, blah, blah, blah and they are writing little code and they end up doing nothing because they don't do any they don't write any code but what's the problem here as you can see here i'm using um this inner text and i grab the value from the inner text of this button and then i increase it by one and then i change the inner text of the counter with whatever number will i have next well, the problem is that here I'm using data from my markup, from my HTML, from my UI. While in this second version, I'm using a variable that I'm changing and based on that value changing, I'm updating the UI. So it's totally different. In one way, I am manipulating the DOM and I store data and information in the DOM, which is absolutely terrible because you can have a bunch of bad things happening. The first thing is that you might repeat yourself. You are not keeping your code simple. You're not keeping your code dry. You might repeat yourself multiple times. You might have uh, security issues later down the line, maybe not with this app, but if you teach yourself to store information in the UI, you'll be absolutely destroyed, okay? Don't do that. Then the second version, which is this one that you're looking at, is pretty much changing a variable or some data and then I'm creating the UI based on that data. So the UI, whatever the user sees, it's a side effect of my data changing. This is extremely important and extremely crucial. Again, you will not see it here in this counter app. You will see, it, you'll say something like, oh, but this is easier. Fair enough. But if you do things the easy way and the wrong way, you will develop bad habits and that's gonna bite you in the ass later. Now I wanna show you the exact same concept, but with a to-do list. What we have here is we have a form that's wrapping this input, then we have a list in our HTML, and pretty much whenever I type in something, I create an element, I have a checkbox, and I have a delete uh, button, which removes my item whenever I click it. So it seems like it's working, right? It seems like it's a proper to-do app, which is, I mean, not too bad for a beginner, right? We are creating a, an LA element. We are creating an input. 
We are setting the type of that input to be a checkbox. Then we are creating a delete button. We are setting up the text of the button. Then we are putting the value of the input inside the li. Then we are adding the checkbox, the delete button. Then we put the li inside the list. Then we are resetting the input value so the user can type in a new value in there. And then whenever we are clicking on the button, we are removing the li element from our DOM, which seems like yeah, it's a pretty decent to-do app. Well, you are wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Why are you wrong? And it's not your fault, by the way. It's just you've been taught the wrong way from tutorials. But why is it wrong? What if I want to sort my items from the to-do list based on the date of creation? How would I do that? How can I sort my elements based on the completion type? In this way, I, can, I mean, I could maybe technically do that, but it's going to be an absolute nightmare, right? If you think about it. But the right way is to manipulate an array. Because essentially, a to-do app, it's an array. The YouTube comment section, it's an array. By the way, leave a comment in the comment section so you see how the array actually works. Then each item from the list, it's an object, right? Same with uh, the comments. Each comment in the comment section, it's an object. And then it has different properties and values and whatever. So the way I do it here is I have an array. I push an object which contains the text, the check property, if it's false or not, and an ID, which is a new date. I could create other type of ID, but this one is good enough because no other date will be the same, no matter how many inputs I'm gonna add in there. Then I reset the input value and then I call this function render UI, which is gonna clear up my list. Probably it's not the most performant way of doing this, but it does the trick. And then for each item in this array, I'm going to create an ally, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And then when I delete my button, I'm going to filter the initial um, array, okay? And in this way, I'm only manipulating the data and I am creating the UI as a reflection of my data. This is the trick because right now, because I'm working with arrays, I can create a function that's gonna sort my array or filter and leave only the items that are checked or items that are unchecked in the list. And then I can do a bunch of things. I can derive state from different, you know, uh, properties and whatnot. And I can create something really complex. I can do a bunch of great things because I'm using an array and you can learn how to manipulate an array in like, five minutes, right? How to sort an array, how to filter an array, how to change a property inside an item from the array, how to find an item in the array and so on and so forth. And this is the right way to approach um, creating applications with JavaScript. And if you focus too much on the UI, you'll have a very, very bad time and difficult time. But if you focus 100% on modifying variables, modifying arrays, modifying objects, modifying strings, numbers, and then take those variables and put them into your UI, then you'll have a way, way easier time creating complex JavaScript applications. Again, this is just a sneak peek. I cannot go over into too much detail. You might have questions, I understand, but due to the nature of like YouTube, I cannot really help you. If you understood something from this video, good for you. If you didn't, I cannot do much, you know, um, because this is a very important subject and you actually need to understand it and do it properly. And all my students that are coming from Udemy, Code Academy, Free Code Camp and all this stuff, they have really big troubles uh, creating applications because they do them in the wrong way and then it takes like two, three weeks till they learn the right way. So if you cannot get it from a YouTube video, I, I can completely understand it. But if you want to actually understand this and become proficient in JavaScript and React so you can get that first developer job making six figures and working remotely either from your home, from your pajamas or uh, from Bahamas or Mexico and Croatia, whatnot, 
then what you can do is you can apply for a free consultation call to see if you can be part of my coaching and mentorship program and to do that the link is in the description fill in your details there are a bunch of questions in there like maybe five or six make sure you answer them properly because otherwise I will have to cancel the call because I'm running almost at full capacity okay every month so a bunch of people have been applying and I had to deny them because they didn't fill in the questionnaire properly so if you want to be part of my coaching program and work towards getting you that first developer job please be careful with how you fill in those questions okay in the questionnaire until next time yours truly Christian.